Welcome to Getting Students via Google Advertising, AdWords Tips and Tricks for Instructors. Derek Spanfelner here, the Director of Client Success at Learnivore. Today I'd like to give you some practical advice and some fun tricks to help you learn to promote yourself on the world's biggest advertising platform, Google. As someone who has a teaching business, I'm sure you've asked yourself a number of times, how am I ever going to show up on the first page of Google? The answer, unfortunately, isn't as easy as being passionate about what you do and sharing it with others. For now, let's avoid the utter confusion of concepts like SERP and SEO and focus on what exactly you can do to optimize your AdWords campaign, which by the way is called SEM, Search Engine Marketing. Don't you love all these acronyms? This means that if you don't have an AdWords account, you need to create one. And if AdWords is an entirely foreign concept, I'm speaking gibberish to you right now, that's okay too. Just check out the link below where Google does a nice job giving an introduction to what it's all about. Before I get started, I want to give you fair warning about marketing and advertising. Even when you put in your hard-earned dollars to advertise on a platform like Google, and you think you've figured out the perfect recipe of search keywords and targeting, you still may not get a single client. Be happy to create a little bit of awareness around your services. If 1% of people are clicking on your ads, you should be ecstatic. 2% and higher means you get to start blowing up the party balloons for a celebration. That being said, you ought to be gathering metrics on your end to get an idea of what people are doing once they click on your ad. If people are going where you want them to, but not pursuing your services, that means that maybe you need to do a better job hooking them once they're there. So let's get started. Again, I could probably put together a whole video walking you through how to optimize your first campaign, but as you can see here, Google actually gives you some really helpful tips when you're just getting started out. Follow those tips. Once you are into your AdWords dashboard, you can make a lot of changes. You can see what actually works from some of the tools that are available, and you can make some tweaks from there. So you're in. Chances are you see the Google AdWords dashboard, and it's the same feeling you get when walking to the cockpit of a plane for the first time. What are all these knobs and doohickeys? Let's break it down real quick. These are your campaigns. A campaign can be as general as you announcing your new tutoring service, and as specific as the discounted test prep class you're offering high school students as the testing season approaches. For each campaign, you can make any number of ads. I'd suggest creating a few different ads. Change the wording a little bit in each to see what language speaks to your audience. Just like when you're optimizing your learner world profile, it's important to be concise and know what one or two things about you and what you're offering might appeal to people who want to learn from you. Next to the keywords. The keywords you target for a campaign should be reflected in your ad text. If you're targeting the phrase New York City drum lessons, then these words should be a part of your ad text. The better they match, the better your quality score and the better your position when ads are displayed. You want ads that are displayed at the top of search results, not in the side, not below. Those are clicked on a lot less. For more on your quality score and how that affects where your ads are displayed, hit up that link below. On to ad extensions. Ad extensions are pretty cool because they allow you to advertise for their selling points. So you have a testimonials page on your website or you're offering another learner work class that viewers also may be interested in. This would be a great place to put them. Be aware that your extensions won't show up in ads if you have a low quality score for the keywords you're targeting. The rest of the tabs are important, but more important are the tools you can use to make sure you're finding the right keywords. My two favorite are the display planner and the keyword planner. These will give you the best impression of which keywords to use, where your ads will show up, and other factors you ought to account for when creating a campaign. Let's start with the keyword planner. This is where you go to figure out which keywords are best for you. Start by getting some ideas together by clicking on search for new keywords. Make sure your filters on the left are accurate. For example, if you're targeting people in Boston, be sure you put that location in. If you want only closely related keywords to those that you enter, then be sure that's the case. Look through each filter and see what it does for you. The best way to brainstorm your initial list of keywords is to think of who your ads are targeting. If you're targeting kids or beginner guitar players, you're going to have to use keyword phrases that someone new to guitar would use. Learn to play guitar, beginner guitar lessons, how to play guitar chords, how to play the B chord, which is actually giving me fits as a beginner, easy guitar tutorials, and so on and so forth. Think of brands that beginner guitar players may be into, websites or YouTube channels they may go to to start learning, and anything else you think would be relevant to a beginner guitarist or their parents. Quick tip, use Google itself to punch in these terms and see exactly what comes up. Try using these websites as keywords. Wouldn't you want people going to these websites to check out your ad instead? As you see, you get a lot of returns. Ad groups will give you ideas related to each keyword you punched in, while the keywords section will give information for both the keywords you put in and related ones. You'll see the available information for competition, monthly searches in your filtered area, and the typical amount of money that is paid every time someone clicks an ad related to this keyword. So it makes sense that you want to choose keywords that have low competition high search volume, and low cost per click. These are the keywords that will give you the best bang for your buck. Just remember, the keywords you choose should match the language in your ads. If not, go back and make that change. If you aren't finding keywords that you think are good enough, go back and brainstorm some more or continue searching through the ad groups they give you. You can choose single keywords or whole ad groups to add to your campaign. You can always take them off later. Looking at your plan on the right, click on the pencil icon next to ad groups. 
This brings up the type of keyword matches you're looking for. Yet again, since AdWords is such a complicated system, I'm going to defer you to the link I've included below, which outlines when and why you should choose different types of keyword matches. For now, let's leave it on the broad match default. Take our prized keywords and add them to a new campaign or one that we've already created. If you are creating a brand new campaign, be sure to keep in mind the keywords you have chosen so that they may be used in the ad text. Once you've established where these targeted keywords will go, let's head back to the display planner. This is the other really helpful tool that AdWords gives you and is great if you're looking to do image-based ads or even video ads. For now, we'll act like we're just doing a simple text ad. Put all your keyword ideas in like you did for the keyword planner, adjust your targeting, and then, instead of looking for more keywords, let's take a look at placement ideas. Now what's cool is they give you this list of all the websites in the Google Display Network. Start looking at the sites that have high relevance and high traffic. Click on a name to see if the demographics match the type of audience you're looking to reach. If so, add them to your plan. Be sure to switch through to tabs like videos so that your ads can also show up on related accounts on YouTube. Save the ones you like to your account and add them to an ad group. If your campaign includes both search and display results, then be sure to add these display keywords to that same ad group. The next step from here, if you haven't done so, is to create ads for your campaign based around the keywords you've specified. Okay, so we've done a really quick wrap-up of Google AdWords. I've given you a sense of how the Keyword Planner and the Display Planner work for you. Now I just want to leave you a little bit of advice. First off, don't be afraid to make adjustments. Off. If you aren't getting a lot of search impressions, meaning that people just aren't seeing your ads, try changing your minimum bid on your cost per click. Try making changes to where the ad is delivered, when it's delivered, and to who. Switch up whether Google delivers exact matches to your keywords or phrases, or includes more broad interpretations. Again, experiment. The next piece of advice? Don't be afraid to start new campaigns based off of something new you're doing. For example, if you're now offering a free trial drum class, then you ought to be targeting keywords like free drums and using those exact words in your ad text. Remember, choose one or two things that make you stand out and have a substantial search volume. The last tip, don't be afraid to fail. No one gets it right the first time. To be honest, a lot of big companies throw a lot of money at AdWords and they don't get it right. That's why you're going to be smarter and you're going to keep at it and learn from your mistakes. If you're in the midst of your own Google AdWords campaign and you'd like a hand or some advice, feel free to email me at derek at learnavore.com. Best of luck getting word out about your teaching business.